subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia news line I am Usma Jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 31st of March India's opposition Congress party status protest over fuel price hike Third foreign ministers meeting among neighboring countries of Afghanistan held in China thick layer of haze reduces visibility causing pollution concerns in Nepal and now for all the details as petrol and diesel prices were hiked again for the ninth time in the last 10 days across parts of the country India's main opposition Congress party held nationwide protests to demand a rollback in fuel prices on Thursday daily commuters express their domestic budgets have been shaken amid the rising fuel prices India's main opposition Congress party led by its leader Rahul Gandhi staged a protest in capital New Delhi on Thursday over a hike in petrol and diesel prices for the ninth time in 10 days and a steep price rise of cooking gas. Demanding the ruling party Bharatiya Janata Party to roll back the price hike, Congress leaders accused the government of stealing money from the poor and handling it over to industrialists. With an overturned motorcycle place at the protest site, opposition leaders also garlanded cooking gas cylinders as deities to mock the government. The government has to stop doing this. This is hurting the poorest people in the country and it's hurting the middle class. Uh, government has to ensure that prices do not rise and they stop raising diesel and petrol. Similar protests were also held across India, including in northern Amritsar and southern Chennai cities. The Congress has decided to launch a nationwide campaign against price rise from March 31st to April 7. Meanwhile, commuters expressed a frequent price hike has shaken the daily domestic budgets. The rates of petrol and fuel have been increased across the country and vary from state to state depending upon the incidence of local taxation. सेंटर गवर्नमेंट ने तेल महंगा करी जानती बोटा लेके उन अपना काम सार लिया उन तेल महंगा करी जानती है खर्चा बढ़ गया होगा खर्चा तो पूरा बढ़ गया जी खर्चे तो सारा बजट ही चल गया Prices are set to be raised further given the sharp jump in crude oil prices in the international markets it will have a cascading effect on the prices of other items a severe bout of heat wave spell has already swept parts of northern and western India as summers are about to set in. People are consuming juices, fruits and ice cream as they try to beat the rising mercury levels. Sweltering heat wave conditions have intensified in parts of northern and western India giving residents a tough time already as summer is about to set in. Amid temperatures ranging from 37 to 41 degrees Celsius, daily commuters in Indian capital New Delhi were seen consuming juice and fruits at roadside stalls to beat the heat on Thursday. People in western India's Rajkot city covered their faces with cloth as they came out under the torrid sun, while in Ahmedabad city a huge crowd was seen at an ice cream shop eating ice cream and shakes. The Indian summer starts early in April and continues till late June when the monsoon showers usher a sort of respite in July. I think it is very hot here. It is about 41-42 degrees here. It is very hot, but now what do we do? We don't have to go outside. We have to drink some cold water. It is like limbo sherbet. And it is very hot. It is also our body is hydrated. A resident in northern Kanpur city said he had not experienced such heat wave conditions in the month of March. The India Meteorological Department has said that the heat wave spell would continue for another two days in Delhi and for next four to five days in central and western India. Some 
Summers in India are a difficult time when soaring temperatures lead to numerous casualties. Possible reasons for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization, leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Power Minister Pavitra Vanniarachi on Thursday said the country will be turning off its street lights to save electricity amid the worst economic crisis in decades. The island nation of 22 million people is struggling with rolling power cuts for up to 13 hours a day as the government is unable to make payments for fuel imports because of a lack of foreign exchange. A diesel shipment under a 500 million US dollars credit line from neighboring India is expected to arrive on Saturday, the minister said. But she warned that the situation was not likely to improve anytime soon. The financial crisis is a result of badly timed tax cuts and the impact of coronavirus pandemic coupled with historically weak government finances. Sri Lanka was left with reserves of $2.31 billion as of February forcing the government to seek help from the International Monetary Fund and other countries, including India and China. Moving on, students of Karakoram International University in Gilgit, Baltistan held a protest recently over a hike in fees and demanded reinstatement of a fee reimbursement scheme. Most of the students, hailing from economically weaker sections, claimed that they are not being allowed to sit for exams for failing to pay the fee. Scores of students of Karakoram International University in Gilgit, Baldistan recently held a protest demanding the rollback of the hike in their fees and reinstatement of a fee reimbursement scheme. As per 2011 scheme, the students of Masters and MPhil courses in the illegally occupied region were not supposed to pay any tuition fee for their courses. However, students claimed the administration asked them to pay a hefty fee as soon as they got enrolled in the university. Most of the students hailing from the economically weaker sections claim the 2011 scheme has been abolished and a blanket hike in the fees has been imposed across all courses and they are not being allowed to sit in exams if they don't pay. We have not got admission to any other university. We had a free master's degree here, so we have come here so that we can be easy. We are in a backward area, so we want to take a student as a knowledge. अच्छी डिग्री यहाँ से लेना चाहते हैं मास्टर्स डिग्री तो तब हम लोग यहाँ पे आए आने के बाद हमें कोई एक साल तक कुछ नहीं कहा गया एडमिशन फी और फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर की हमने फी भी पे की 2012 से लेके 2019 तक के जो स्टूडेंट्स थे जो आएंगे मास्टर्स में उनकी फीस माफ थी सर अब एक्चुअली यूनिवर्सिटी हमें बहुत तंग कर रही है बच्चों को क्लासेस में बैठने नहीं दे रही हुकूमत ने जो है फंड दिया जिसकी वजह से चार सेमेस्टर्स हमारे कवर हो गए और अभी बाकी जो नहीं हुए उसकी बेसिस पे हमें यूनिवर्सिटी काफी मसले क्रिएट कर रही है हमारे लिए While the fundamental education system of Gilgit Baldistan is in shambles, locals claim a systematic government design has kept the ambitious students away from pursuing higher education. China on Thursday held third foreign minister's meeting among neighboring countries of Afghanistan in ancient town of Tungshi to discuss the economic and humanitarian crisis facing the country. Afghan acting foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki later took part in the neighboring countries of Afghanistan plus Afghanistan foreign minister's dialogue. A separate meeting of the extended Troika was concurrently held among special envoys for Afghanistan from China, the United States and Russia. The third foreign minister's meeting among the neighboring countries of Afghanistan was held in China's ancient town of Tunzi on Thursday morning. Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi chaired the meeting. Foreign ministers or representatives of Pakistan, Iran, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan attended the meeting. The parties exchanged views and coordinated positions on promoting stability in Afghanistan and helping and supporting the Afghan people. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres in a video message to the meeting said the international community should work together to address the needs of Afghanistan, including humanitarian assistance. Later, the neighboring countries of Afghanistan plus Afghanistan foreign ministers' dialogue was held and it was also chaired by Wang Yi. During the event, representatives had direct dialogue with the acting foreign minister of the Afghan interim government, Amin Khan Mutaki. 
topics on the special difficulties and request of the Afghan people, how the international community can increase support for Afghanistan and promoting Afghanistan to build an open and inclusive political framework were the focus of discussions during the event. On the sidelines of the third foreign minister's meeting among the neighboring countries of Afghanistan, the meeting of the China-United States-Russia Plus consultation mechanism on the Afghan issue was also held on Thursday. Special representatives from the United States, Russia and Pakistan attended the meeting. The meeting known as Extended Troika Meeting on Afghanistan is expected to encourage regional nations and the international community to increase support for Afghanistan's reconstruction to help it achieve peace, stability and development at an early date. In news from Nepal, a thick layer of haze has enveloped Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Visibility in the valley went down dramatically this week with the air quality index ranging from 150 to 170 in some areas amidst Kathmandu being declared one of the most polluted cities in the world as per the report by IQ Air, a Swiss air quality tech company. The air quality in Nepal's capital Kathmandu has deteriorated for the last one week. On Wednesday, a thick layer of haze shrouded the capital city, reducing visibility as air quality remained in the unhealthy category. Buildings and towers were enveloped in haze as visibility was reduced. The drop in the visibility due to the increased pollution level also impacted the operation of the airport in Kathmandu in the early hours of Wednesday. Nepal, with a population of around 30 million people, is located in the Himalayas between China and India, two of the world's biggest polluters. As per the report by IQ Air, a Swiss air quality tech company, the Himalayan nation's capital has remained in the list of the most polluted cities in the world. Dust from construction works, exhaust from old, poorly maintained vehicles and smoke from coal-burning brick kins blend in the murky haze that hangs over Kathmandu city, raising the risk of cancer, stroke, asthma and high blood pressure, experts say. Nepal usually witnesses the pollution level surging high in the dry months, ranging from March to May, when forest fire is more common. As rain remains off the sky, failing to wash out all the pollutants, the atmosphere gets surrounded by pollution, dipping the air quality index. Bangladesh's first ever metro rail is going to embark on its journey in December this year as the work of project has gained momentum following disruptions due to COVID-19 pandemic. Bangladesh's first metro rail will begin commercial operations on December 16, easing gridlock in capital city Dhaka. Dhaka Mass Transit Company Limited DMTC, a Bangladeshi state-owned enterprise, is behind the 20.1-kilometer project with work being carried out by joint ventures. A joint venture between China Sino Hydro and Italian Thai Development Public Company Limited, a Thai company, has been building the main depot for MRT Line 6 in Dhaka since 2017 at a cost of about 180 million US dollars. 1996 is the first ever metro rail project in Bangladesh, and we feel pleasured and honored to have the chance to participate in such a milestone project. Once the project is completed, six car trains will carry 60,000 passengers each hour and traffic congestion in Dhaka will be greatly reduced. Bangladesh borrowed funds from the Japan International Corporation Agency to finance the metro rail project in stages. The first train made a trial run in August last year on a section of the line with 16 elevated stations. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.